Hello, everybody, and welcome to Uncle Todd for Christ. Thank you for joining me on this Hallelujah Friday. It is, what is it? It is May 17th, 2024. It is 12.53 p.m. Eastern Time as I speak and record. Yes, you heard me right. I was blessed to have the day off today. I was blessed to get almost 10 hours of sleep. Not solid, not straight through. Praise God, you know, this body's deteriorating. The bladder just doesn't seem to hold as much. But guys, I'm going to continue to praise God that I have a bladder. I'm going to praise God that I can I can get up in the middle of the night and go to a restroom. That my, uh, A friend of mine said it years and years ago. He said, I praise God that my plumbing works. So many of us don't, guys. There's so much to give God praise for. And again, I continue to praise him for every single one of you to continue to join. And I thank you. Before I get started into the days, I had a, I'm going to call it, viewer feedback and uh we'll just we'll just call her mom just for sake of argument anyway my mom asked me a question this morning and i praise god for her uh yesterday's video said about what you know what i call like repetitive prayer guys understand something i only share what god puts on my heart that doesn't mean that that is not how you have to follow you guys i say it all the time it is the holy spirit that will teach you it is the holy spirit yes we encourage one another and things like that and I had to look it up. You know, what does the Bible say about repetitive prayer? Guys, we, we'd be on here for hours and hours talking about prayer. But understand this. If you pray for the same thing every day, like and, uh, she had shared that she prays for the same people at night, nothing wrong with that. Guys, every morning I pray the armor of God on me. People will say, well, don't take it off. Guys, the main thing about prayer is you are communicating with the Father. You are God is not going to slap you upside the head and say, look, I'm tired of talking about the same thing. Let's let's change the subject. God just wants to speak with you. He just wants to hear from you. He just wants that relationship. The thing that came up uh, when I started thinking about this is the uh, the parable of the persistent widow who kept going to the judge, you know, kept going to him, kept going. And finally, he gave in and said, OK, look, let's just let her have it. That, that's a parable worth reading. So there's the scriptures that would back up about persistent prayer but then there's scriptures that say don't be like the hypocrites don't be you know standing out on the streets with repetitive prayer but just to be heard and seen we talked not too long ago about going in your private room shutting the door and follow, and shortly after that it says then pray like this and that's what we call the lord's prayer but guys prayer is communication with the father he just wants to hear with from you he is not going to chastise you for asking for the same thing over and over again me personally, let's just say I would do something, I would get a physical injury. Me personally, I would pray for it once. And I would actually thank him that I'm already healed by Jesus' stripes. That's where I'm at, guys. That's where I'm at in the body. That's what's in my cup. Understand that I got my cup. You got your cup. One body, many parts. Amen. But I appreciate that feedback, Mama. Uh, today's title, The Lord Your Light. The Lord Your Light. In our scriptures, it's out of Micah chapter 7. Folks, I didn't print it again. I highlighted uh, a few more verses. Ch uh, verse 8 is you know, the highlighted or our leadoff verse. But I've got more than that highlighted. And it looks like we've got about three or four more scriptures throughout this devotional. So we'll, uh, we'll just go ahead and add them. Please get in there and read that stuff and eat it and meditate. Amen. Again, and I also want to thank any newcomers. I think we're up to 129, 139 viewers, subscribers, whatever, guys. I think that's awesome. I think it's awesome. We're growing together. Praise God. Uh, Micah chapter 7, verse 8 reads this in the Amplified Classic. When I fall, I shall rise. I shall arise. When I sit in darkness, the Lord shall be a light to me. Amen. Um, don't know where today's devotional comes from, so we're just going to read it. Child of God, when you are lost, when you have fallen, when you are going through tough times, when you feel you're at the lowest of lows, even there, you can find God's strength and light. <laughs> Guys, you might be right. You might feel you're at your lowest of lows right now. And you probably are not. You may feel like that, and Satan may be telling you it, it just don't, and it's not going to get any worse than this. Or, guys, we're not going to dig into it. But whether you're on a high or low, God is always there. He's always there to call out to. Like we said at the beginning, that's prayer, communicating, calling out to Him, praising Him, as well as making your requests, petitions known to Him. All it's all prayer. No matter how low you have fallen, there is one capital O who will lift you up with his right hand. 
And think about that, guys. If we're seated at the right hand of the Father, we're already in Christ in the heavenly places, according to Ephesians. That's the word of God. We're already seated in Christ at the Father's right hand. That is how close. Of course, my right hand's here on the camera. Picture this stuff. God, God has got you right there at his right hand. You're not seated on the left where he's got to spin around and understand these things, God. That is how close we are to God, and that's how close God is to us. Um, simply lift up your face, your prayer. There we go. Your praise. How about that? <laughs> praise and come on, guys. And he, the son of righteousness, will send his spirit to comfort you, to help you find your way back to him. Okay. I got to, uh, guys, you already know where I'm at. If the Holy Spirit now dwells in me because I've given Jesus, given my life to Christ and I've declared him as the Lord of my life, the Holy Spirit does not come and go. That's just my opinion, folks. But I understand what the author's saying here. And we, we, we discuss it, my brother, we discuss it. So many churches say, Holy Spirit, come. Guys, if Christ is now in you, the Holy Spirit is now in you. But I'm not taking away anything because it does change the atmosphere you can invite the holy spirit into the atmosphere and say holy spirit come you know holy spirit come forth come about not not like let's just sit here and wait till the holy spirit shows up guys please don't let satan put those lies in your head once you've made christ the lord of your life and declare that believe that in your heart and said that with your mouth publicly before men christ now lives in you god the father god the son god the holy spirit it's not just part of it it's all of it in you amen um, he will direct you to his word. Ooh, we say how important that is, which will act like a lamp to your feet. That is Psalm 119, 105. Think about that, guys. If the word of God is a lamp to your feet and you're stumbling and you're falling, usually you're stumbling and falling because you're not paying attention where you're, where you're walking. Maybe you're, you're uh, straying off of that trail God's put before you, that narrow, windy trail, and you've decided to walk that flat, broad, broad wide path that leads to destruction. Guys, when we're on that narrow trail, it's windy and it's twisty and it's narrow and we're going to trip. We're going to stumble. But we use the word of God to light the way. Amen. There you will find a guidance you seek right in the word of God, folks. Yes, there may be some dark days. Yes, there will be. Jesus said there will be some turmoil, some low points. There's going to be, folks, we should not be shocked or surprised. But you are a child of God. You are protected. No one can snatch you out of his hand. No one. That's uh, John chapter 10, verses 28 through 30. I'm going to go back and read that. And I'm pretty sure I'll be adding that to today's description. You are never out of his reach or his hearing. And that's Isaiah 59, 1. As a child, as a, as a believer of Christ and a child of God, you can say to yourself each and every day, when I fall, I shall arise. When I sit in darkness, the Lord shall be a light unto me. Amen. And we've got like a little, I guess it's like a little poem here at the end from Anonymous. How oft a gleam of glory sent straight through the deepest, darkest night has filled the soul with heavenly light, with holy peace and sweet content. Amen, guys. And this just ties right in with the devotion we're doing, achieving that peace of spirit. Calling out to God. Again, I can't emphasize enough. We've got to praise him more. We've got to elevate our amount of praise. Our praises to God in prayer should outweigh our complaints and our wants. Again, my opinion, folks, I don't believe we are praising God enough. I don't believe we realize what an awesome, loving God he truly is, what he's already done for us, and what's yet left to be made manifest. If you're watching this right now, to me personally, the greatest part has not even come yet. When we get to be face to face in the presence of God for eternity. So I think, yeah, I think I'll just continue to praise him as much as I can every day until he returns to bring me home. Amen. So guys, thank you so much for joining me. Please, please, please find that quiet time. Get away. Get in his word. Get in that light. That light that shines the path, shines on your feet, that path that we're on, folks. And until tomorrow, Saturday, the 18th. Enjoy the rest of your day. God bless you guys. And we'll see what he says then. I love you.